Welcome to Fun with Drilling Engineering. In the context of energy transition, we want to move away from coal, gas, oil, and nuclear power towards sun, water, wind, and geothermal energy. But this is not as easy as you might think. Our energy supply is based on a mix of energy from different types of power plants, as you can see here in this picture. First of all, we have to cover a certain base load that must always be available. Then we need to cover an energy demand that typically fluctuates during the day. There are of course the very short term and unexpected energy peaks that also have to be covered. In order to cover the entire energy demand at the lowest possible cost, we need different types of power plants. So currently, we have the typical continuous runners to cover the base load. These are the coal-fired power plants and the nuclear power plants that run more or less with constant power, always. The fluctuations in the day-to-day -day power demand can for example be covered by gas power plants, which can be ramped up or down a little faster than coal and nuclear power plants. And to cover the unexpected demand peaks, we can, for example, use pumped storage power plants that pump water up a mountain and when short-term energy is needed, we let the water flow back down so that electric energy is produced. So, it is the energy mix that keeps our world going and we need all types of power plants to be flexible and cost-effective. Here is our challenge with the energy transition. Of course, there are lots of regenerative power plants, but we can't really rely on them that they will work when we need them most. For example, wind power plants, most of the time, the wind is either too strong or too weak, and therefore the windmills only have a capacity utilization of around 15% on the average. That means 15% of the time the wind is optimal to get the maximum power out of such a windmill. If there's a regenerative power source at all, that can provide us with a constant base energy supply, then that would be a deep geothermal power plant. Deep geothermal energy is available in the summer and in winter, at day, at night, all around the clock. But unfortunately, deep geothermal energy is still quite expensive in many areas. For a moment, let's forget about all these load factor stories, cost, and so on. Let's just see how many renewable power plants we would need to replace one big nuclear power plant. For these, I have prepared a table with some numbers. For a fair comparison of different power plants, we need to compare the produced power, not the installed power. We can see, for example, in order to replace one nuclear power plant, we would need about 29 large hydroelectric power plants. This is problematic because we'll have to dam up our big rivers in 29 different spots. And we can imagine this would be a challenge for shipping traffic or for the fishes. Or we could build 4,250 windmills to replace one nuclear power plant. That's difficult again. Here on this picture is the biggest wind farm we have in Germany. Our required 4,250 windmills will fill up another 51 wind farms of this same size. It's pretty obvious that there's not enough space for another 51 huge wind farms in our country. Usually, it is already a challenge to even get an approval to erect a single large windmill. Then, let's replace our nuclear power plant with 340 deep geothermal power plants. That means we'll have to drill 700 to 1,000 deep boreholes, all of which are 4 to 5 kilometers deep. Just for comparison, I would like to say that currently the total drilling performance in Germany is about 3,000 meters per month. So we can drill 3,000 meters per month, but we need 700 to 1,000 boreholes of 4 to 5,000 meters depth each to replace a nuclear power plant. These are very big challenges that we need to solve. So on one hand, we need to get out of the oil and gas age and do it as environmentally friendly as possible. We cannot simply stop using oil and gas and coal from one day to the next. 
we have to reduce the fossil fuels as quickly as possible. But on the other hand, we also have to quickly develop our geoenergy systems. We have to build many more geothermal power plants and above all, build many more large underground storage facilities where we can store surplus energy when not needed and bring them out of storage when needed. This can only be done in artificial underground caverns or in depleted oil and gas reservoirs. In such underground storage facilities, we cannot only store energy, we can also remove CO2 from industrial points from the atmosphere and dispose them on the ground. This is also a contribution to reduce global warming. Now, all of these activities takes place in the earth and it is organized, done, managed by geoengineers. For a successful energy transition, we need more geoengineers and geoscientists. Therefore, we'll be very happy to see you soon in our lectures here in Freiburg. We're looking forward to see you. Look off.